Show your hand! Video just released showing the moment an officer is shot during a domestic disturbance call. Plus, officers have to pull a fellow officer out of a vehicle when he is found drunk behind the wheel. I don't know, it looks like it might be turning this away. And at least three people were killed when a string of at least 27 tornadoes rip up homes in the Deep South. You're watching Action 10 News, first at four. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on Action 10 News. First at four, I'm Drew Spire. A sheriff's office in North Carolina fired a school resource officer who was seen on surveillance video body slamming an 11 year old student. Mark Straussman has more. Brace yourself for an outrageous moment. A sheriff's deputy escorting a middle school boy lifts and body slams him. A student who weighed 70 pounds body slams him twice a school resource officer who's supposed to protect students. The family of the unidentified 11-year-old says the boy was knocked out. We first saw the video, we were stunned, we were shocked. Sheriff Curtis Brame says the unidentified deputy has been fired. I don't expect my deputy, any deputy of law enforcement in North Carolina to carry out their duties in that way. There are no official statistics about excessive force involving school police and students. One national two-year study showed at least 141 complaints of school police officers with abusive use of force. North Carolina requires its school resource officers get additional training. It's unclear whether the deputy involved in this body slam got his. No student should ever experience this in any way, especially not in our schools. John Miles is the middle school boy's grandfather. It's very painful because you send, you send the kids to school to, uh, to learn. Now the boy is now at home recovering. The school district says it will review its protocols and procedures in the wake of this incident. Well, right now in New York City, police are searching for some men accused of kidnapping a 16-year-old girl right in front of her mom. Watch this video. Police say Carol Sanchez was walking with her mom about 11 o'clock last night in the Bronx. Now, the video is kind of blurry, but it does appear to show the men hopping out of a car, grabbing the girl, dragging her, putting her in the car, and then going back and knocking her mom to the ground. And then the guys drove off with the car and the teenager in the car. Now, two other men were reportedly inside the car at the time, but that's what's going on right now in New York. Drew. Andy, chilling new video released by the New Hampshire Attorney General's office shows the moment an officer gets shot. Watch. Show your hand. No! I'm shot. shot. Officer shot. Pretty dramatic. It happened in August as police responded to a domestic call in Ware, New Hampshire. As the officers approach, a man points a gun at them, and that's when officers and the suspect exchanged gunfire. The officer was shot in the arm. Police say the gunman was on drugs and suicidal. He died after shooting himself. Body cam video captures the moments Colorado police officers find one of their own passed out drunk in a patrol car. This just released video shows Aurora officers finding the officer Nate Meyer unresponsive behind the wheel of his unmarked vehicle in March. Firefighters had to break the car's window to get to Meyer. He just wouldn't wake up. Officers did not have his blood tested and Meyer was never charged with a crime and is still on the force with a demotion. The city manager has launched an independent investigation into how this case was handled. An SUV gets sandwiched between two buses and it is caught on camera. Look at this, the Czech Republic. The SUV drives right in between the two buses where it hit on both sides and then was sandwiched in. Despite heavy damage to the car, the driver survived with only minor injuries. A powerful winter storm system is behind a spring-like tornado outbreak in the Deep South. People in Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama, they are all cleaning up today after a deadly string of at least 27 tornadoes ripped up homes and tore through neighborhoods. At least three people were killed. Here's more. This is what people saw across Louisiana and Mississippi Monday afternoon. I don't know, it looked like it might be turning this away. There were at least 27 tornadoes in all. It was a rare outbreak in December that ripped apart homes and businesses across the South. From above, you can see widespread damage. For many homes, nothing was left standing but the studs. In Alexandria, Louisiana, most of this school and daycare was shredded. 
Piles of sheet metal and wood are now in the front yard. Just 10 minutes before that tornado hit, teachers led 18 students who were inside the school to the church next door after they received the alert about the tornado. The students took shelter under the pews. Afterward, fire rescue crews wrapped the students in towels and blankets and walked them away from the wreckage. In Vernon Parish, Louisiana, Betty Potan died after her trailer overturned just one day after her 59th birthday. She just wonder why in the world things happen and you, you just don't take life for granted because somebody could be gone just a second. You could see it was coming and you could feel it. She kind of shake the house. About 130 miles northeast of here, another twister battered the small town of Edwards, Mississippi. In Guntown, Mississippi, this Baptist church was destroyed after a tornado touched down here. It was one of at least 35 structures damaged in Guntown. According to a police dispatcher, several people were injured. The conditions are not known. Last night, emergency response teams searched for people who may be underneath the rubble as the city remained dark without power. The tornado that hit southwest Louisiana was on the ground for nearly 63 miles. That is nearly unheard of. 63 miles from where it started in southwest Louisiana and moved to the northeast. Only one death was reported in Louisiana. David Begno, CBS News, Alexandria. Our chief meteorologist Sharon Razor. Now we have our own weather to deal with. What the coldest temperatures around here in a long time, right? Yeah, you know this season for this season, the most widespread cold we're going to see yeah. yet this season. Who knows what will happen as we get into January? But for now, it's chilly out there. We still have the wind blowing. We've got our clear sky and those very cool temperatures right now across the area. You can see we are only in the 50s as expected today, and we have that north wind blowing, which is keeping it awfully cold out there. If you get in that breeze. Uh, despite the sunshine. Now, as we go through the evening, of course, you're going to need that heavier jacket. This evening, temperatures are going to go from uh, this 59 degrees, which we have right now, with all that very dry air in place. We're dropping into the 40s this evening and 30s overnight. In fact, a freeze is expected. You see this pink area here, this brighter pink area inland? We do expect temperatures down to about uh, 29 to 32 degrees. As you get closer to the coast, a freeze is possible in inland coastal areas. Corpus Christi, very close to that. I think there could be some spots maybe on the southwest side where we have wind protected areas. You may hit 32 briefly, but right now it's looking like just above freezing for Corpus and most of the coastal areas. Now, as we get into tomorrow, we are going to see those temperatures slowly rising, but it is still going to be chilly. I'll show you the forecast when I come back. Look forward to it, Sharon. Thank you. Coming up in Action 10 News, first at four, a teen held for the death of a New York City College student faced a judge today. We'll have what happened in the courtroom when we come right back. Support.